Welcome to part one of this two-part series that introduces you to flight data in general and the Airing 717 format in particular. In this short video we will cover the basic concepts of how flight data is stored on a typical flight data recorder or a quick access recorder. While there are many other standards used for storing and retrieving flight data, Airing 717 is still the most common, particularly for crash protected flight data recorders. As such, it is a great place to start to learn some of the basics of how flight data is stored and retrieved. By the end of this video, you will have a good understanding of some basic concepts including frames, subframes, words, bits, and sync codes or sync words. To illustrate these concepts, I am going to start off with an arbitrary chunk of binary data. This is representative of what your typical data analysis software would see after the flight data has been downloaded from a flight recorder. Within this chunk of data, each one or zero represents a bit. I am going to take this arbitrary chunk and group 3072 bits of data. Don't worry just yet about why I pick 3072 bits. There's a very good reason for that number and we'll get to it by the end of the video. The bits that I've just grouped together make up what's referred to as a frame. A frame of data represents 4 seconds worth of actual flight data. 4 seconds of data isn't really the most intuitive time frame to work with, so we're going to divide our frame into 4 equal parts. Each subgroup of data now represents 1 second of actual flight data. Each of these groups I just created is referred to as a subframe. A subframe is, very simply, one second of flight data. Each is numbered from 1 to 4. We will get to how they are numbered in just a moment. If we take a look at one of the subframes, in this case subframe 1, we can further divide the data into what are referred to as words. A word is, very simply, 12 bits of data. Looking at subframe 1, we can see that we have a total of 64 12-bit words. This particular data frame would therefore be referred to as a 64 word per second data frame, since one subframe equals one second's worth of data. Just like subframes are uniquely numbered, each word in the subframe is also numbered, in this case from 1 to 64. Each bit within each word is also sequentially numbered from 1 to 12. Just to make things a bit tricky though, bits are numbered from least significant to most significant, or from right to left. Don't worry about that too much though, as your data analysis software knows where to look for each bit. We can now see why I picked 3072 bits worth of data at the beginning of the video, as this is an example of a 64 word per second data frame. 64 words per subframe times 12 bits per word times 4 subframes per frame gives us 3072 bits per frame. I chose a 64 word per second frame for this video as it is the easiest for me to illustrate but it is becoming less and less common as modern memory capacity continues to advance. In addition to 64 word per second Standard data frame sizes include 128, 256, 512, 1024, and even 2048 word per second. But also be aware that some quick access recorders may use non-standard sizes such as 127 words per second. Also keep in mind that some recorders use word sizes other than 12 bits. Always consult the documentation for your aircraft. Regardless of the frame or word size though, the basic concepts do remain the same. Let's go back to our subframes for a minute. The numbering of words and bits may seem straightforward, but you may be asking yourself how the system can differentiate between subframe 1 and subframe 2, or any other for that matter. The first word in each subframe is reserved for what is called a sync word or sync code. Each subframe has a unique sync word. The most common types are Teledyne and Hamilton, but they are by no means the only types. Again, check your documentation to be certain. You need to tell your data analysis software what sync codes to look for, 
after which it will do the hard work for you in identifying your subframes. Now that we have an understanding of subframes, words, and bits, we now have a type of indexing system into our flight data. We can use this information to tell our data analysis software where to look in the data for particular flight parameters. Let's use airspeed as an example. In this example, airspeed is defined as being located in subframes 1 to 4, word 16, bits 1 to 12. This information would be provided by the aircraft and or recording system manufacturer and should be part of your aircraft maintenance manual. When we pass this information to our data analysis software, it knows to look at the highlighted bits to find airspeed in the data file. We are not limited to recording data only once per subframe or once per second either. In the example of vertical acceleration, it is recorded at words 6, 14, 22, all the way up to words 62, or 8 times per second. We do not need to use up all the bits in the word either. In this example, gear position is recorded in all four subframes, word 12, but only bit 9. Remember, bits are numbered from right to left, so the highlighted bit represents bit 9. The other bits in the word are still available to be used by other parameters. Some parameters are recorded less frequently than once per second. In this example, captain displayed roll angle is stored in word 20, bits 1 to 12, but only in subframes 1 and 3. It turns out that the first officer displayed roll angle is located in the same word and bit locations, but in subframes 2 and 4. That covers the very basics of the Air Inc. 717 data format. Hopefully, you now have a good idea about how flight data is written to a flight data file and how we can extract it. The data analysis software you use will take care of the hard work for you once you tell it where to look using the concepts you learned here. We're not quite done yet though. A 12-bit word only lets us use values of 0 to 4095. It's not exactly the most useful range for looking at things like airspeed, altitude, and heading. In part two of this video series, we'll look at how to convert those bits into more meaningful and representative engineering units. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found the video informative. Please visit us at www.scaledanalytics.com for more videos like this or for information on some of the data analysis and training services we provide.